Real Pink's Fan Next Episode 151 for Monday, September 17, 2012. Happy birthday, BS! Woohoo! Hello, Lisa J in the house with you guys celebrating seven years of no pink spandex. I cannot believe it has been that long, but we've made it thus far, and I hope to give you seven times, seven times, seven more. Okay, wait, seven times, seven times, that's a long time. It's <laughs> a long time. I'll be with my cane, my dentures, black, hello, welcome to, no, I don't think y'all need that. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for listening, for going on our website, for watching our videos, and I really don't have much more to say other than thank you. By you guys supporting us so much, we want to give you something very special, so I won't waste any more time, and here you go. Remember, even after seven years, stay away from that spandex, it doesn't breathe. Peace. Hello everyone, Lisa J here with uh, another episode, and this is not just another episode, let's be real. I got my guys, Jeremy, Tristan, Spy, say what's up. What's up? what's up? And we're all here because today we have a very special guest. She has been on numerous shows. She's been on Felicity, The Division, Wildfire. She, I mean, currently on Flashpoint. And of course, you know, you know her as our beloved Pink Ranger, Kimberly, from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> Please welcome Amy Jo Johnson. Hey, Amy. Hi. Now, Hi. before I begin, mm-hmm. do I call you Amy? Do I call you Amy Jo? I, you know, I don't... You can just call Amy. me Amy or Amy Jo. A lot of my friends call me AJ. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we'll gradually become friends and I can call you AJ. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> my best friend calls me A. Oh, A. Because, mm, <laughs> It just gets shorter and shorter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Amy, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, let's start out. Let's start out from the, okay, not the very beginning, because that's like the womb. Yeah. We'll start a little later than that. And um, you're, what, what, kind of, what kind of kid were you? Well, you know, I always ask my guests this. What kind of child were you? Right. I, I think I was um, <clears throat> a bit of a daydreamer. I lived in my head a lot. Um, and I was also incredibly rebellious. Um, <laughs> I got kicked out of private school. Um, wow. and, yeah, I did. How come? It was a fundamentalist Baptist church school, and I just it just it wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's fundamentals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works for some people, for right? Me, it just you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh, I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, and um, I think, but, you know, when I was seven years old, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be a performer at some point in my life. So I think I spent my teenage years sort of daydreaming about moving to New York and just sort of leaving the small town that I had grown up in. And I did. As soon as I, you know, graduated, I went straight to New York. Yeah. And, and you also got into gymnastics at a young age, correct? Oh, yeah. That was probably the way I spent most of my time was at the gym doing gymnastics. And um, I just, I mean, I loved it. It was probably the, one of the biggest parts of my life growing up, for sure. And you tried out for the Olympics? No. Or No, I never got Olympics? that far. But the, the gym that I grew up in um, was this amazing place called Cape Cod Gymnastics. And the women who owned it and ran it um, were just awesome. They had us, like, sell candy bars to go to Europe. So I went to Europe three times when I was a kid, um, just traveling all over different countries and competing. And and they were just – it was just a really awesome place to um, sort of just see the world with a bunch of girlfriends, you know? It was, it was fantastic. So how come – because I read that you got an injury, and that's why you had to stop. Is that true? Well, when I was about 10 years old, um, I actually, before I, before I was 10, 
I was completely fearless and I would do anything, especially the coach I had was, his name was Ken Haas. Um, actually, I've been Twittering a lot about him and his daughter that I've been trying to help. Um, oh, Lexi. Lexi, yeah. Oh. He was my coach and he was amazing. And then he decided to leave and go become a chiropractor. And when he was leaving, for some reason, after he left, for some reason, I, I had hurt my arm or something. And I just got a lot of fear. Like I became a real chicken. And, um, and it sort of, I just sort of leveled off at that point. At, when I was 10, I sort of hit my peak. And then I stayed in the sport for about, until I was 16. And then I finally at 16 was just like, you know what? I think I'd rather go flirt with boys and <laughs> get kicked out of private school than be in the gym anymore. So I sort of, I left gymnastics when I was 16. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and then when did you move to New York? When I was 19. So I graduated from high school. I spent a year on Cape Cod um, just working and saving money. And then the following year, I um, auditioned for AMDA, American Musical Dramatic Academy. And I uh, went to New York to go to school there. And what was that experience like then? That was amazing, too. But I found out at that time that I had stage fright. Oh, really? <laughs> I was I was really quite petrified as soon as I got on stage and they ended up they didn't ask me back the second year because I um well again I skipped way too many classes and <laughs> <laughs> nice. it was New York City are you kidding um and and um and I think the stage fright had something to do with it so then I ended up going to Lee Strasberg for about six months and then um a guy that I had met, who was my boyfriend, was moving to L to Los Angeles, so I decided to uh, join him. So I moved out to L.A. as well um, in that January. So I spent about a year and a half in New York and then went to um, to California. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And so you went to California, and I read that in, like, the first month you were out there. It's like, oh, there's this audition. Eh, Power Rangers. Eh, let me go for it. So is that true? It was like a month that you were there and then you got the show? No, I got there in January. Okay. And so I spent about six months really just um, kind of diving into classes and um, doing some student films. And I did this one acting class at um, with this woman, Katie Wallens. And she was also a casting director. And so that summer... So I was there about six months. That summer, she was um, casting Power Rangers in her office. So she called me and said, why don't you come in? So I went in, and I got the job. And I actually had just a little discouraged, a little lonely. My The boyfriend I had, we broke up. He had moved back to Texas. And I was on my way moving home. Like, I was done. I was going to go back maybe to New York or something. Really? Yeah. So I had um, actually basically sold everything and was moving back home. But the night before I was moving, I met this man named Walter Rainey, who ended up being my acting coach for about 10 years after that and helped me get through my stage fright and stuff. And he sort of, um, I met him in the Hollywood diner, which doesn't exist anymore. And he um, encouraged me to stay. So I stayed and actually I went home for about two weeks. He called my parents, my dad and my mom and was like, she really should come back. And so I, Went back, and actually that week that I got back was when I got the audition for Power Rangers. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it worked out. <laughs> oh. So what was the audition process like? Um, I think I went through about, I don't really remember, but I think about eight auditions. Eight? Um, I th it was a lot. I remember there was a ton of kids, and they sort of narrowed us down to like five different groups. So, like, me and David Yost, and um, there was actually, Twee wasn't with us at that point. It was a different girl. Right, Audrey Dubois. Uh, yeah, and then Walter and um, Jason. Not Frank, but the other guy. Yeah. Or, I was going to oh, say John. Yeah. yeah. His name was Jason. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, so they paired us together. So there was about five other groups. Um, mm -hmm. auditioning, going through the same auditioning process. So we got really close, um, hanging out and just sort of, I don't know, preparing for the auditions and, and we, and our group ended up getting it, which was really cool. So they never mixed and matched each group. It was just going to be one of the groups that they put together. 
Yeah, for some reason, I don't know how that worked or what their mm. you know, logic was, but then they ended up replacing um, Audrey with Twee. So that was the only sort of shift within the group. You know, in the beginning process, they might have paired us in different things, but I don't really remember that. I remember just being right off the bat with David and Walter mm. and everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because we, it was at, I believe... It was one of the Paramorph, because, you know, the first Paramorph one. Con is, you know, a b- b- big Power Rangers convention. Right. And I believe it was the first one. And Tony Oliver had um, you guys, uh, like, not, not necessarily like audition tapes, but like where you would do your, like a monologue. Like you saw you oh. do your monologue. Oh. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> and so not only did we see you guys, but we saw the runners up oh, <laughs> they made the right decision oh good <laughs> <laughs> because it was especially the runners up for zach i'm like whoo oh no that, that was rough it oh, was rough oh, okay good well so it all worked out it did work out so yeah so um when you you booked the show and tell me your like your first memories being on set then Okay, so it was Dino Rangers at the time um, <clears throat> when we when the show just started before they changed the name to Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got the show in September and we filmed pretty much all year. I remember just uh, maybe I don't know, like six months or so. But anyway, it didn't air until the following September. Um, but I remember shooting out in the desert, and I remember just. I don't know, just feeling really lucky to um, be working, you know, because I know this, it, take, it's, it's, it takes years sometimes, or, I, or, you know, some people never work, whatever. So I remember just mm-hmm. feeling really blessed that I was, like, you know, doing this, this show. So then it didn't air until the following September, which was sort of a shock and kind of crazy because we didn't know how, how um, popular it was going to be. Right. And they had this thing at the um, Universal Amphitheater. Right. And I think it aired the week before. And we were going to do this show, like three shows that day, because it held like 7,000 people or something. And we go pulling in. And, oh, my God, I'd never seen so many people. We were like, what is happening? <laughs> and so then, <laughs> then we went and did the show. And we had to, like, jump out on the stage and lift our helmets off. And, like, people were screaming like we were rock stars. And running around. I remember, I remember just screaming into my microphone going, Wee-hoo! like running on the stage. <laughs> the people at the back are like, please don't scream into the microphone. You're hurting people's ears. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I've never, <laughs> it was so green, right? So then I went home that night and I had horrible, horrible, horrible nightmares. It was so overwhelming. It was like, it was too much. It was, it was all of a sudden, it was like massive amount of people just like screaming your name and like, it was too much for me. I went home and I had horrible nightmares. Oh. And um, oh. yeah. And then and then so then the sh- after the show aired, it just kind of went crazy, right? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, oh. and another really funny thing that happened when the hindsight at the time it wasn't so funny. Um, we went to Hawaii. Did you ever hear about this trip that we all went to Hawaii? No. Okay, so oh. they fly us all to Hawaii for sort of like a an appearance of some sort. I don't know what we were doing, but so we landed in Hawaii. It might've been like a year after, maybe six months. Um, there was no security and there's like 10,000 people at the airport. Shut the front door. <laughs> no, it oh, was so no. scary. I just remember like standing behind Jason Frank. So it must've been like a year, a year later because he came on later. And mm. we're walking through and you know how they put lays on you? Right. Wa- right. Okay. We all almost were laid to death. They put, <laughs> they put so many flowers on us. I couldn't breathe. I started hyperventilating. I look and Jason turns around and look at me. He has so many flowers. All you can see are his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so crazy. And my boyfriend at the time was with me. And he was like trying to like keep people, keep people back and like pushing us through the crowd and Anyway, we got out the front door, we got in the limo, and then I'm, we're just driving away and turning around and looking back. And Jason, of course, is hanging out the roof, screaming, yeah. and there was just a sea of people. It was so, it was very overwhelming again. Oh, but it's a very God. funny story in hindsight. 
<laughs> you go. Wow, it sounds scary. It was. It was. They had absolutely no security. It was so weird because they didn't expect that. They didn't expect the there to be so many people. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you know what? That, that reminds me. Um, because I remember you can yeah the the show started it was huge success and what have you and some some cast members maybe who didn't work with you but like you know you know seasons after um they some of them were like yeah we've never you know seen Ham Saban I don't even know I mean I know what he looks like but I never met him or whatever oh, really? like what was his like did what, do you know what was his um reaction to you guys not necessarily I mean of course the show but like I don't know. did he you know ever. What? We spent a lot of time with Shuki Levy, and I okay. spent a, a fair bit of time with time, like in that first year when they were sort of creating it and stuff. Um, and <clears throat> I think obviously they were pleasantly surprised. I mean, we were a non-union show. Mm-hmm. Literally, we were being paid, I think, like top six hundred bucks a week. Wow. No That's residuals, insane. you know, absolutely not one residual. I don't know what? if you know what that means, but you know, when they air the shows right now. With right. the shows, I like yeah the reruns yeah yeah right. completely that that first generation, uh, um the no original cast gets, like not zero there, wow. it became union like I think maybe three years after I left I'm not sure at what point yeah it be- yeah um I forgot which season but yeah it did become union at some point it became at some union. point yeah so they get compensated but of course they play the original ones most of the time anyways exactly. <laughs> 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 Wow. Yeah. Six hundred dollars a week. I think it was around there. It was like that. And we were doing like two episodes a week. <laughs> it was so <laughs> I don't remember. I could probably find an old pay stub or something, but it was like it was nothing. <laughs> this is really like and we had no job. agent. I had no agent at all. But in the high, you know, at the same time, it was an amazing training ground. Mm-hmm. Um, it taught me so much. I went through you know, all the, just learning how to be on a set, deal with the crew, um, stop looking in the mirror. Like, I learned that real quick. Like, don't worry. Like, there's a hair and makeup person. They'll, they'll, like, take care of that. You don't need to be looking in your mirror and looking at what you look like. Just all these, like, these little hitting a mark. Like, it was like school. I think the frustrating thing for me a bit, it was not frustrating, but um, nerve-wracking thing. Anyway, it was school and we weren't really hugely compensated and it became so popular that there was this that's what gave me nightmares it was sort of overwhelming you know it was like if that show stopped tomorrow I'm gonna have to go down the street and become a waitress again Mm -hmm. but at this at that time it was so popular and the kids who loved the show were awesome that was amazing to have that fan base but it also brought in a fan base that wasn't kids like men a lot of people in prison or you know it just brought in (laughs) seriously it brought in this really crazy strange fan base as well along with the amazing people and the amazing kids so that you know that's always been a bit I know I'm talking a lot but anyway people go ahead go ahead child you know people ask me why I don't go to like the more iconic or these these type of things and I, I couldn't, and I didn't all through the '90s because because of this, because it really frightened me. So you were, so you're saying that you didn't, you know, like go to different conventions or whatever because you were, you felt overwhelmed, and you would literally get nightmares by being overwhelmed. Yeah, and not only just because of my brain being afraid of it, but there were a few certain instances during the '90s, and knock on wood, that those people are gone or whatever that that were very dangerous and we're sort of um stalking a little bit and mm-hmm. anyway situations i don't need to tell you all about but they it frightened me because i, I think a lot of people don't realize i mean I, of course you know uh comparing myself to you is like ridiculous but you know being a woman out in the public you know, it's a little different from men because not only do you have people who, yeah, you got people who like what you do and appreciate what you do, but then you also got those people who are very eager and very determined. So it's, it's, I don't, maybe people forget that, you know, for women, it's a little harder, you know what I mean? 
I think so. so. And I think with the type of show that it is, so it does sort of, I mean, every show breeds a different fan base. It just does naturally, you know what I mean? So that show, besides the children now that are grown up, like you guys, there were also other people, you know what I mean? Like it just, it, it, it bred a, 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 a whole array of different type of fan. So, mm-hmm. so um, yeah, and, and being a woman and feeling vulnerable, it made, it made me a bit nervous to put myself out there like that. I see. I see. Do you, do you, do you mind if I ask, like, do you still feel that way? Or is it kind of uh, receded a little or? You... Um, I think because of the other projects I've done through the years that, mm. um, <clears throat> like I said, each show does sort of um, breed a different type of fan base that I think I've like found people who follow my career who understand me a bit more than just being a Power Ranger. So, I, and there's a more respect there. And um, I don't put myself out there per se in the way that maybe some other people do because I, I, I just, I've never wanted to be tr- like really, really, really famous because it just scares the crap out of me. So I keep it intimate. Like you guys went to my show on Cape Cod. I, I tw- you know, I put it on Twitter and stuff. But I think the people who are actually going to show up <laughs> are going to, you know, like you guys, like you who care a long way to go to that show. And I thought that was awesome, you know? Yes. Yeah. So. I see. I, I see. Every situation is different. And I, just, right. I have to look in my heart and my gut and my instincts and see, okay, how do I feel about, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? How does it right. feel? And I think what the good thing about, um, right. well, Power Ranger fans is that, yeah, like, I mean, yes, we were young. We were li- <laughs> we little ones. Yeah. And, but then, you know, you grow up with somebody yeah. and not only do you grow up with them literally, but, you know, you, you grow up with them and mature, you know, because like, yeah, because yes, I known you as pink ranger but then i watched flashpoint and i watched you know the the division and stuff like that and felicity like i you know i watched those shows sometimes i watch it because i'm just like okay amy joe's on there all right let me let me let me check it out and i actually end up liking the show not be you know of course for you but like i like it because it was an actual good show and a lot of people i think the misconception with like i guess i'll say nerdy fans the misconception is that, well, you know, they're just, you know, they're a little awkward, they're a little whatever, but there are many people who literally mature because of the uh, people that they relate to, you know, you being an example and other people in the cast, so. Totally, you know. totally, yeah. yeah. And I love that, you know, I think it's so cool, like, <laughs> I mean, that was 20 years ago, it's so funny, or 19 years ago, however many years ago it was. But when people come up to me now once in a while and are like, yeah, I watched you when I was a kid. And it's like, I'm looking at this adult. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm so old. Because I like close my eyes and I'm 17 still. So it's like. You look <laughs> you look like you're my age. Shoot. Oh, so let me, and I won't mention my age. But you, <laughs> you, you look, still look young. So, you know, people think like, oh, wait, you must have been two when you were on that show. Okay. <laughs> You know? Okay. Oh well, that's very sweet of you. But um, anyway, I I really love the fact that um, you guys are growing up. <laughs> and you know what? I really hope. I really hope that like, you know, some fan of Power Rangers like grows up, becomes a really high exec at like some like amazing movie studio, and <laughs> and hires <laughs> you. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> Hi. That's, that's great. Like, I'm not kidding. It's true. It's like a pound out, right? It's awesome. Look, let me let me find where Steven Spielberg is. Befriend him. How are you? What? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of your cast, um, well, I mentioned a couple of cast members. Just a couple, and just you know, you're gonna give your thoughts. Yeah, you down? Sure. You're down? Okay. All right. So let's start out with Walter Jones. Uh, well, I haven't seen Walter in about. God, 15 years, I think. Wow. And I think the last time I actually talked to him on the phone was when Twee had died, and he actually called to tell me. Um, And then we, like, emailed a bit in the past year, sort of reconnected. Um, 
but he's fantastic. I had a ball with him. He was, he was, um, he was really fun. Yeah. Amazing. All right. So let's move on to Austin Shane John. You know, I literally have not seen that person or talked to that person since he left the show because he left before I did. Okay. Uh, yeah, but he was an interesting cat. He was a uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was so. a very very nice guy, but um, he was. Uh, I remember he had some crazy stories. Like he used to tell some out there stories. That's sort of the thing I think I remember most about him. Like what kind of stories he would tell. <laughs> Oh my God, like story, I don't even know how to explain it. He's just had these crazy stories about his life and I don't even know if half of them were true or not or whatever, but I can't even remember. I just remember being like, oh my God, this guy has had a crazy, crazy life. Oh snap. Mm. You gotta find Austin again. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I remember, and then like, actually I think the last thing I heard about him that he something happened to him physically where and but his dog was with him and his dog kept him alive like his dog kept like gnawing on his hands trying to keep him keep him awake yeah i heard that something heard crazy it. happened yeah. but yeah i mean and he's you know attend i think he attended the first paramorphicon and so you know, we oh, saw yeah. him recently yeah and now he's currently um he's an emt oh nice so uh Did he lives in california overseas. he you know he in virginia Oh, nice. And then now he's overseas, I guess, doing his EMT thing. So Really? So when he comes back to the States, we can ask him about the stories. Huh. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Next would be, well, you know, clear the air. A twee. For the- oh, poor twee. Um, yeah, that was just sort of devastating. I actually had gone and met her for a drink at um, Chateau Maman, like maybe two months before she passed away. Wow. Yeah. And then I got that phone call from Walter, and then me and David went down to her funeral. And um, it was just devastating. It was awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, she was amazing, and she was um, really a hilarious girl. She was, <laughs> she, was just, she was a funny chick. We got really close at... A certain point in our life where we were sleeping over each other's house, the earthquake, the big earthquake. Right. Okay. She, she was. We we're having a slumber party. She was sleeping over, and oh my God, we went through that earthquake together, me and her. We thought nuclear war was happening. <laughs> we did. We didn't know it was happening. It was crazy. <laughs> and and then... how crazy is our job? Okay. So, <laughs> earthquake happens. All right. About to say. Go ahead. The morning of the earthquake, they called us into work. We oh, went. Really? Dead. Wow. We go down there. They, we ended up not shooting because, like, the crew didn't show up. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wouldn't think so. I mean, wow. It was great. It was crazy. They're just kind of pinch their pennies. That's for sure. <laughs> for real, mm. they have that. They have some nerve. Oh, we just had an earthquake, biggest earthquake ever, like Most in like devastating bajillion yeah. years. Um, <laughs> by the way, coming to work. To work. It's like the free, like the highway is split into two. It takes about eight hours to get to work. So no problem. But in the end, we were all so young and just kind of like alone in California. It was actually that morning all kind of showing up. I remember when Jason, like uh, Frank, came was like pulling in. It was just kind of like, oh, like because they all these people were our home basically. So it was mm-hmm. kind of nice to actually all gather on that morning as well and just make sure everybody's okay. 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 Speaking of, yeah, up Jason Frank. <laughs> um, Jason is probably one of the craziest people I've ever met in my life. In a good way. In a good okay. <laughs> he is I mean I have actually I saw him in New York maybe like five years ago. We hung out one night. Um, but working with him, he was just one of those people that had a, like that special spark that charisma that not a lot of people have. And he has it. He's something very special about him. But he also has this, like, um, mentality of, like, oh, how do I explain it? Like, he doesn't care. He just doesn't care. Like, I remember they had these quads that we were shooting with or whatever. And, like, he comes 
was outside. He's the type of guy, like, he would, he got on the quad and just took off, like, just got on it, like, we're about to start shooting, and just drives down the street and out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> and the director and everybody's like, where is he going? And he was gone for, like, 20 minutes. He just went on a ride. <laughs> just because. Just because. Those are the funniest things. I just remember laughing so I almost peed. I laughed so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that was him. That was like that was who he was. He was just the crazy, the crazy guy. And we'll get back to him in a second. Okay. We'll we'll go to David Yost. Ah, uh, he's one of my best friends. I love that man so much. Um, we've stayed very close for the last twenty years. I just saw him on Cape, on Cape Cod actually. Um. Yeah, I just think he has a very sweet soul. I love that guy. And he was great to work with. And he was, I don't know, we used to fight a lot, me and David, little cats and dogs, almost like brother and sister. We have a brother-sister relationship for sure. Um, We haven't fought in 20 years, but when we were working, we used to to get in all kinds of crazy fights. (laughs) What would you guys fight over? (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) What kinds of, yeah. (laughs) Um, We were like brother and sister, literally. (laughs) Did you ever fight over boys? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm like, okay. am I missing anybody? Oh, when you decide, okay, what was the reason for you to leave the show? Why did you want to leave? Because I was done. I had done 152 episodes, and I was really good friends with Shuki, Shuki Levy, who is the one of the owners, him and Heim. And I just, I, I did the same thing when I left Felicity. I just went to him and as a friend said, I think I'm done. I think I'm ready to like go try to do something else. And he said, awesome, great. Here, I wrote this little movie called Suzy Q. Will you do this in about maybe like five more episodes or finish the season and do this little movie? I'm like, sure, that's, that's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he let me go. And I did Suzy Q with him up in... um. Vancouver and and then that was that okay so and then what did you think of Catherine Sutherland basically taking your place yeah I think I met her in Australia was she from Australia yes Mm -hmm. so was she in the movie no No. okay all right so they how did she come in I don't remember how that worked out I think I I think think she said she auditioned for the movie or something like that she first auditioned for the movie to play Dacia then didn't get the part but yeah Anyway, yeah, she was great, and I think I did maybe three episodes that she was in as well, or something like that. I'm not sure, then, um, but I worked with her a little bit, and she was she was great. Okay, and then the year before, um, Austin and Walter and Twee had Twee. left. Right, they literally they wanted it to go union, and the, you know, and that was they had every right to want that, and I was just naive and um, young and stupid, and David left too. And no, David stayed. What am I talking about? And me and David and Jason stayed. And in hindsight, I wonder if we all band together. I wonder what would have happened. I wonder if we would have become union. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, th- what did they, they, so they went in by themselves like, look, we want to become union? Yeah. Is that- yeah. Okay. And they said, really? You want to become union? Okay, I'm just going to replace you guys. <laughs> And then so became like sort of the Power Ranger thing is that it's so, I, I always say it's kind of like Menudo, right? Because like the, <laughs> the, members in the and members in the band always changed. So we became completely replaceable, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, I think basically the truth on any show, really. Oh, These my. people are expendable. It, at the end of the day, we're all... And, and- yeah and how was that i was wondering like how how was it being like right in the middle of that where suddenly you're doing scenes where at least on screen it kind of looks like like maybe you would have a line where you'd say oh great da 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 trini and then it cut to like stock footage of trini from some previous episode because yeah, it was trini a weird time. Is not there yeah i just remember i i don't know i didn't really know what was happening or I didn't even have an agent yet I was friends with Shuki I didn't I you know what at the time I don't even think I knew what a union was like I just was so naive and I don't know it was an awkward time when they left it was sad because we were we all started it together and then I left just a year later 
right. it's done. I was like, okay, this, this has been great. Now it's time to move on. Yeah. And so before we move on, just mm-hmm. a couple more things. Um, what, what were your thoughts of, because then when Twee, Walter, and Austin left, mm-hmm. um, Karen, Johnny, and Steve came on. So what were your thoughts on them? I think my first memory of them, I'm not sure in order how it went, but I, we did the movie in Australia. And that's the, the biggest memories I have of them is us all being in Australia and Boy, what a trip that was. We ended up staying there like seven months. It was a long trip. We went to shoot the movie for two months and like they replaced one of the characters and blah, blah, blah. Like we were there seven months and it was awesome. And it was so fun. And we we all became sort of a family there. And um, they're great. I saw Steve at a show, one of my shows, maybe like seven years ago or something, eight years ago. And he seemed great. Um, I know Johnny has a, a band that I've sort of checked out a little bit and they seem great. And um, yeah, I liked them all. They were awesome. Karen, we had so much fun in Australia, me and Karen. It was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, so many of y'all sing and play guitar. Y'all need to make one big band. <laughs> and just, <laughs> just rock out because so many, like, not just you guys, but so many former Power Rangers, they, you know, like, oh yeah, I sang, I've done this, I do, okay, I have an album. I have like five albums. I'm like, what? Y'all <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh goodness! And and Mighty um Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie was your first movie. Yeah. So what was that like? Your your first big star in your first big movie. Yeah, I know that was non union as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I just remember there were times when they had us dangling a little over fire pits, and like I don't know. There were times when I was a little bit nervous about my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Seriously, oh, it's like no. this non-union movie and it just felt really dangerous at times to tell you the truth. Me and David caught on fire on set. No. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It was little, ask David questions like that. Oh my god, it was a little nutty. Um, but at the same time, oh my god, Australia was incredible. Um we stayed in Sydney and um it was really exciting we had stand-ins for the first time we never had stand-ins on um, during when we did the tv show and yeah y'all got y'all got some budget now yeah and, <laughs> and, for what, and it was really good producers oh my god i remember the people that were involved with that movie it was like a really it was like 35 million dollars or something to make that movie and it bombed in the box office which is a shame but because people could see it on tv i think so why, why go to the movie um, and people, I mean, to be fair, I love Karen, Johnny, and Steve, but they're like, who are these people? Who are these new people? I, I think so. Them. Yeah, I think I think they shot themselves in the foot that way. So you know, right? I yeah. got you. And but so when you left Power Rangers, then how did you come back to do the Turbo movie? Um. So I left, and because they were really nice, they asked me. And I think it was like a year later. It took me a while to work after that. I started doing a lot of classes and plays, and my philosophy is not to worry about the business aspect. Just dive into whatever art or craft it is that you want to succeed in, and and, um, usually good things come from that. And so I think it was about two years until I got a different job, and I think – it was a year later when they did the turbo and they asked me to come do it. And I was like, sure, I'm not doing anything right now. So I, I came back to do the movie. Oh, yeah. okay. And so compare the two of them because first movie, 30 guy. dollars. Second movie, $35. Yeah, the, I, the second movie was definitely a bit more dangerous. That's for sure. Oh my God. I remember, remember, you know, the scene where we were under the water. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. the scuba gear right oh my god they had <laughs> they had a light they had the electric lights and they weren't underwater lights they weren't like oh wow oh no one fell in the water and uh-uh. that <laughs> that <laughs> moment, was in the pool <gasps> could you imagine oh my goodness yeah <laughs> Dang, oh. like, you're like, sure, I'll come back and do this movie. Like, to... oh, that's when as I was hanging over that camera. volcano. Remember that volcano I was hanging over? Uh-huh. I was up there crying. I remember at one point, I'm like, this just doesn't feel right. I need oh. to get down. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, my goodness. But how did it feel like to play, you know, to be a little evil and, you know, try to knock the crap out of Catherine? 
Oh, right. I don't even remember that. Um, <laughs> did I take drink a potion or something? <laughs> like, I think you fell into the pit. Basically, you went lost and fell into the pit. All oh, right, and we came out evil. Yeah, you know what? I honestly, I don't remember. I like Catherine. I had a lot of fun with Catherine. Okay. Well, I don't know. It was probably fun to play an evil person, but I don't really remember. Okay. Okay. And so, before we move on to your other works, um, any other funny moments or any other interesting little little anecdotes that you can remember from either shooting the movies or the show? If you want to embarrass some people, then that's fine. But anybody, anything that you can remember. <laughs> Please do. Yes. Let's see. Oh, my God. David would laugh so hard if, if I told you this story. But it's really embarrassing on my part. But you know what? I don't care. Um, so, you know, the scene. Were we ever in some tiny little car? The <laughs> rad bug? Yes! What are we yes. doing in that? <laughs> that so weird. Anyway. <laughs> it was either there... Or actually, oh my God, he would die. He knew I, okay. Yeah. So in the opening, the opening scene when we all fall on the floor. Right. Mm-hmm. And we right. Stand up, look at David's face. Watch David's face. It looks like something smells really bad. And uh, why? Because I... I farted. <laughs> <laughs> And um, if you look carefully, you see David's face. He was not happy. <laughs> mm. wow. Like, why did I have to land on her? <laughs> okay, that's it. That's, not, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> Got you. Mm-hmm. We'll have to fire up the DVD player <laughs> and... Uh... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> for real That's yeah because yeah all the, shoot all mighty Morphin is on dvd now and had had well high def quote unquote high quality so we we we'll able to check it out yeah oh goodness oh and to set to settle the the record okay yeah. everybody was like oh let tommy kimberly they're in love what was there anything was there anything beyond being on screen loves Oh, you know what? I think for sure we had a, a crush on each other. For sure. For sure. Oh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Did this crush lead to anything? Hmm. You know, I don't remember. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving <laughs> on. Yes. <laughs> moving on. I love you already. Um, <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, like, after Power Rangers, I remember, you, yeah, you mentioned doing Suzy Q. Adorable. Loved it. Loved it. And I remember I'm watching Felicity. I'm watching, I'm, you know, yep. get my Carrie Russell on, you know, okay. Get my, okay, all right, a little <laughs> college drama. All right. And I was like, oh, my Amy Jo Johnson. <laughs> what? So, how did you get that role? I auditioned for it um, the same way I got all the other roles. I've auditioned. Um, that one um, is probably one of the jobs I've had that I'm most proud of. I love that show. And I thought it was um, really, really well done. And the people involved were so amazing. And, um, yeah. Uh, JJ told me that when I walked by the room to go to the bathroom and they saw me while they were auditioning people for Julie, he said, before I even came in the room, he's like, oh, there she is. There's Julie. Like, he already knew. Yeah. He saw me. He was like, oh, there she is. Oh, so I thought that was kind of oh. cool. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, J- you mean J.J. Abrams, yeah. right? Yeah. Who is now, like, such a big I know. Name. So awesome. Yeah. He's one of the best people I've ever worked with. He's just really so good at what he does and so loyal and just so, um, he's inspiring. I really, I really like him. And I, and he was awesome. When I finished, when I had done two years on that show and my mom had passed away and I just really needed a break. And I went to him kind of like I had done with, um, Shuki. And I asked JJ if I could go and he said, yeah, if just do like four more episodes. Um, and, and for sure you can go. And then I moved to Chicago for a while. But um, and then then he was awesome because then he asked me to come back for the last four episodes of this of the entire show. Right. So it was just a really great experience. I think in hindsight I wouldn't have asked to go. In hi- oh, I mean really? I don't regret anything, but at the same time, if I did it again, I wouldn't have asked to leave Felicity. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I read that 
when you got the role um and correct me if I'm wrong that it was supposed she was supposed Julie was supposed to be a dancer mm -hmm. but then you convinced them to be like can she be like a you know a singer well I didn't have Guitarist. to convince them. I just told them I don't know how to dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible dancer. And then I played him some of my music. He's like, oh, perfect. Yeah. So okay. It was just an easy transition. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, so you asked to leave because, you know, your mom passed. Um, she passed away um, she actually, during the show? She passed, well, yeah. Um, when I got the pilot, she was sick. And we did the pilot, and then um, she, when we started filming in June, she actually passed in August. And um, when we first started, so they let me go home for that, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was two years after that, but I realized I had been working the whole entire time, and I never took a pause and just, you know, breathed that in and and kind of grieved. So two years later, I was just burning out, and um, and that's when I asked to go, and, and he said I could go. I just needed a moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after Felicity, I was like, nope, Amy Jo is leaving. <laughs> and then like the show ends and whatever. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, you've done a bunch of shows. One in particular that I am loving. <laughs> loving is Flashpoint. Yeah. Loving. Because I, I mean, I heard about this Flashpoint and I was like, CBS, okay, well, is that the station with like all the old people shows still? <laughs> I don't know. Eh, whatever. Okay, fine. So I didn't, I didn't really check it out, you know, as it was showing. Like, I would just catch reruns here and there. And I was like, oh, okay, Amy Jo's on. All right, all right. I'm a support. And then I watched, I was like, I was hooked. I watched everything. I think, I think the people on it are so good and the writers are so good. They really did a good job with all the stories. We're done now, you know? I mean, right, the new right, season right. actually airs next week for 13 episodes, but um, we're done filming and the show is completely done. But it was awesome. And Enrico Colantoni is just so amazing. And yes. I, it was such a blessing to work with him. I really learned a lot in the last five years working with that guy. Yeah, I mean, we're... And then, of course, getting this show, you, you audition. Was the auditions different? This um, show was different because, you know, I had quit acting everything in about in 2005 I left LA and I moved my life to Montreal of all places oh, wow. and um I just needed to get out and I just needed to uh, I, I always find myself doing that right I think I have a gypsy soul um <laughs> and I had literally quit acting and I was like gonna figure out what else I wanted to do and I got a call to, to come in for that part and I said no and then I got a call to come in for the, there was a, um, a psychiatrist in the first couple episodes. And I'm like, oh, I'll go in for that. And they're like, well, if she'll come in for that. Why doesn't she come in for Jewel? So they flew me in and, and I auditioned for it and I got it. And you know what? It's been so great. And I'm so happy I did because in the last five years, I rediscovered how much I do love acting. And mm -hmm. um, I think maybe for me, it was Los Angeles that was bothering me and it wasn't actually acting. So so yeah, so I've moved to Canada and I love it here. And I know that when I'm watch, I, of course I watch the show, you know, later on. And my my dude Lou, huh? My my my, my Lou, who the oh, oh gosh, I forgot his name. Um, awesome. yeah, yeah. I'm like, why why you gotta kill the brother though? Why 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 <laughs> the brother has to go? I know. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't know what. He was so awesome and so great. It was We were all so sad. I don't know what the, you know, the reasoning or the ideas behind that were. And I don't know. I don't know. Mark Taylor. That was his name. Yes, Mark Taylor. Yeah, he was um, great. He was great. I don't know. You know what? People make weird decisions and, you know, whatever. There was some rhyme or reason somewhere in the grand scheme of things. I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you you mentioned that you learned so much from that show. Mm -hmm. um, what were what was the main thing I would say that you learned from Flashpoint? I think I've become very much more comfortable in my own skin in the last five years. Um, first of all, it could be having to do with having a baby, and then second yes. of all, it was just just the kindest cast I've ever worked with, where so supportive. Nobody really nobody judged. And it just was just, it was very mature. Actually, not the kindest. Let's say the most mature cast. And okay. So there was freedom and room to really grow as an actor, I felt, and really 
Um, and that also could be because my insecurity level had gone down and I, I think I was incredibly insecure because the stage fright I told you about and stuff. And it took me a long time to get over that, that, um, I think for the first time on this show, I sort of, I sort of really got grounded in who I am as an actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay. Again, you said when it premieres, it premieres next week. Yeah. I think Thursday. I'm not sure. Okay. Thursday, Thursday night. Oh, I should know that, but yeah. We'll, 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 we'll put in the links on, on the I website. And then in Canada on CTV. Yeah. We'll put in the links on the website, you know, because it's a good show. If you're not watching it. I think it's great in this last season. Yeah. It's so good. I think it's, and Jules has a lot of stuff in the first like four or five episodes. And then the last two episodes of like mm. Jewel episodes, which were so fun for me. With Sam? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> so, um, and yes, you mentioned, you know, we mentioned in the conversation that, you know, you are a, a singer songwriter. So what drove you to create music? I think I've always used it um, as a way, as a, a sort of like very cathartic. All my, most of my lyrics come from my journal. Um, it's like I, all my songs are usually really sad. You know that because you've come to my show. But I think it's because I really, that's how I express myself when I am feeling emotion and sad and stuff is through music. I haven't figured out how to do it when I'm happy. But... <laughs> Um, but I've always kept it on the side as a hobby. I've never pursued it and tried to get, you know, a music manager or any of that stuff. I've always kept it sort of close to me and it's just sort of my own personal thing that I'll comes in waves for me and I'll all of a sudden feel like going and doing a show. So I'll go do a show, but I don't think I'm built to pursue it in the sense of being on, on the road all the time and on tour. And even though I have a gypsy soul and, um, um, I like keeping it more as um, this this hobby that I can dip into, which is great. Like the movie Bent I'm doing, I use some of the songs from that, um, from my you know my whole carpet bag full of songs. I'm mm -hmm. gonna put in the movie, and it's just nice to have it. I don't know, it's just uh, just a part of me. Okay, and and will you be doing any more? gigs or performances i mean as as a hobby but you know maybe sprinkle a little more in the future you know what I'm saying? sprinkle yeah no like like i said it, like they they um i i mean a hobby i don't i don't know if that's the right word i, I just do it when i feel it kind of like when i feel like painting like cooking i'm so excited after i hang up with you guys i'm gonna go make stew and i don't cook all summer i don't feel it but as soon as it starts to get a little bit cold and the fall's coming I just want to cook so I'm going to go cook stew. I have the same thing with music. It's like it comes and goes. And so when okay. I feel it, I, I do it. I got you. So the next well, time I feel doing like doing a show, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let me tell you, nobody feels like cooking in the summer. It's too hot. All right. You know? like, it's... <laughs> Come on. Like, I, no, I don't want to turn on the oven. Oven? Summer? I don't think so. No. So, yes, you brought up great segue your short film bent so tell us a little bit more about it i'll tell you why i was inspired to do it first is um so i finished flashpoint in june and i went on a few auditions and i'm like you know what i'm just not feeling this um and i've always really wanted to direct and i i feel like because like i said the confidence that i found within doing flashpoint that i think i'm ready on a personal level to um to sort of orchestrate that kind of a thing. So I had written a full length feature film called Crazier Than You last fall, which I love so much and I'm very excited about it. And I think I, I decided that I needed to get my feet wet as a director before really going after doing the feature length film. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this short sort of based off of two characters in that feature length film all grown up and um, and I love it. I'm so excited and I'm having fun putting it together and I'm learning so many lessons about letting go and delegating and, and then how to make a shot list. And I mean, the learning curve is crazy what I'm going through, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And, um, we shoot it in October and I don't know, it's like painting a bigger picture than just 
you know, I love writing a song or I love painting. Um, this just feels like that, but on a bigger level. Uh huh. Because I'm just going from the gut. I'm just, you know, shooting straight from my heart because like within my acting to guitar to any of that, I've never really had formal training of any of it. Um, I'm just, I'm more of an instinctual artist and I just kind of just do how, what I feel. So oh. I, I'm excited about it. I'm really, I think, um, I don't know. I'm excited to see how it feels to direct and just, you know, okay. go off in a different direction. So what Hope was the, I what the feature film about? It's a called Crazier Than You. It's based off of my mom's story, actually. It is fiction and so is Bent. But I sort of, uh, they, the stories were inspired by real events, but definitely fiction. Like the characters in Bent is somewhat based off of me, but completely not. I mean, the woman's a lawyer and has three kids and okay. anti-anxiety pills, which I don't. So, and then the other one is based off my best friend, Johanna, who I grew up with, but it's not her. I mean, this woman's 38 and she's pregnant and anyway. You know what I mean? Like, they're just inspired, but right. very different. And so Crazier Than You is about my mom's story, and it takes place from when she was 17 all the way through her life when she dies. And she was in a religious cult for about 12 years. And I just find it fascinating of, like, how do people get themselves in that type of situation, you know? And so I really dove into exploring my mom's story, and she was just this fun-loving, like, crazy 17 year old like how did she end up in a cult you know and it's through life just life happened in certain situations and circumstances and she just woke up one day and found herself completely brainwashed in the middle of a cult you know and then she gets out and but then also her the movie deals with her finding out she has cancer and um sort of dealing with dying and facing it mm -hmm. so yeah yeah. And and then the move and then the short film is takes took two of the characters in your feature and it's them She has three said, kids in the movie. Okay. Um, in Crazier Than You and a best friend with a daughter. And so Bent is what is the youngest, her youngest and her friend's daughter. Grown up okay. at thirty. So they grew up in a cult. They grew up twelve. Oh years. wow. Yeah. Oh. Yep. So it's them in their late thirties sort of still dealing with her past. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. This got deep. <laughs> this got deep. Yeah. Okay. So, and you're currently running a fundraiser for Bent. And so tell us more about that. Well, the thing is with making a movie, it's incredibly expensive, right? If you want to do it right, not just run in your backyard with a video camera. <laughs> But I really want to do it the right way. So I found this amazing producer named Holly O'Brien. And um, we're just creating, like, a production, you know? I mean, I found an amazing DP and then a really great editor. And we're just putting together this production. The camera is... that we're. I think we're going to rent the red camera, which is yes. incredibly expensive to rent yes. for two days. and It'll be worth it. Totally, yes. right? <laughs> all the equipment and all the stuff. Anyway, ends up being probably at the end of the day, probably thirty thousand dollars to shoot the short. So I'm trying to raise about twenty on Indiegogo to um first of all not put a huge hole in my pocket. Because remember Power Rangers was non union. Um <laughs> 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 and, and then also just to create a conversation about the movie and just to invite people to be a part of the movie making process. Um, a bunch of people have already jumped on board to be producers, which is great. You get your name on IMDb. If, you know, if somebody has um, the intention of becoming a producer in their life, like it's a great way to get a credit, um, something on your resume. Okay. Um, I'm also selling my CD, my new CD that I'm going to come out in late spring. So it's not like, it's a fundraiser, but at the same time, you I think with the perks I gave, you really get your money's worth with what you're giving. I didn't want to try and um, put anything where, I, I tried to make each perk very, what I felt was fair. Indiegogo has been so awesome and amazing. And actually tomorrow it's going to be featured on the Twitter, Indiegogo. 
my uh, bent will be the featured oh go-go campaign for the day so cool um i just love this platform to and raise the money i think it's such a great way to create a really good conversation about the project that you're that you're putting out there which is awesome anyway so it's bent so if you go to indiegogo and you just press film i think in the la last um couple days it's been like the first one that comes up um and then I tweet about it a lot, and I have a Facebook page um, uh, for Bent. And, um, and we'll put the links on the website. We'll yeah. The links. Okay. Cool. So, yes, yeah, so yeah. for people who want to donate, um, just to reiterate, you you know, there's a lot of perks on, on the site where you can participate and be part of making a wonderful short film and so you know get us you could get a cd you can get a postcard with the with the signatures and the autographs from the cast and you, you get a whole bunch of things you can become a producer you become a producer <laughs> you can be legit true okay yeah. so and and if you get if you got look five thousand dollars now five thousand dollars <laughs> you can have a dinner with amy joe johnson Worth now, it. And a private screening. <laughs> and a private screening. It would be really fun. You know what? No matter what, I'm going to like sort of rent out a little place and do like a little screening of the film when it's done. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really, you know what? I kind of wanted to put with that 5000 as a joke. Like, this would be the worst investment ever. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really not expecting anybody to buy that one. <laughs> but um... <laughs> let me tell you something. If you know, anybody you know. is listening to this interview and you buy that for five thousand dollars you gotta let me okay, know talk about that perk that one is... <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that would be hilarious who knows maybe my like you know rich aunt might you know buy that one that is hilarious <laughs> yeah. i haven't seen amy Jo in a while <laughs> let's have some dinner let's, let's have, have dinner. some dinner you know let's what be really dinner. nice shuki levy or haim saban will you please <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's the Ooh, least you can do. Yeah. The least you can do. Look, Cheryl Saban. I know we 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 tight. We tight, right? So you can you can throw in a couple of dollars. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Right. Um, anyway. Oh goodness. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna put the links on there. So of course. Get there. Yeah. Yes. And so before we go, um, any final thoughts that you would like to say to the fans? Um, I, I just want to say thank you to you guys because it's been it's really nice to be able to sort of express myself and be asked these questions and sort of I think maybe clear the air the air for some people who maybe have had preconceived notions about ideas of who I am and uh, I don't know so it's been awesome and I really appreciate the uh, platform to be able to do it thank you and we thank you yeah, we do, because you're just adorable. We love you. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh. Oh, seriously, this this definitely was like one of our most anticipated. Absolutely. Uh, cool. Interviews that we've done, so. Love that. Thank you very much for <laughs> doing this. Yeah, no, so fun. And thank you for the support, you guys. I love it. Awesome. Anytime.